So let's look at some things that actually make what we're doing special. So both the language as well as using uh, this code editor. Code editor doesn't do anything special with this code. It makes it easier to read, but we could do this in text edit or any other like just plain text format, right? Notepad or something like that. Like we could do that. So all of this would also work in like here, but it's not as easy to read, right? Having the coloration and everything makes it much easier to know if we accidentally leave something off, right? Or if we accidentally uh, don't open a curly brace or something like that. So the coloration is beneficial. Now, the other thing that's beneficial is using something like Atom, we can add like some uh, extensions or packages or whatever you want to call them. So if I go into help, I can type package and what I want to find is this one right here. So under settings view, install packages theme. So if I hop over there and there's some things that we can do that can be useful. The one that I really like is the one that I really like is this p5.js snippets. So I would say go ahead and install that. And what that will do is when we are writing out commands, like let's say we do triangle, as we start typing it, it's sort of predicting uh, what we might want to write, which is useful for two reasons. One, if one, it can make things faster, right? Uh, especially some of the longer names, right? Being able to type a few letters and then actually just go to it and uh, press enter can be faster. The other thing is if uh, you're not a super great speller or if you typo a lot, having that um, in there can be great. Or also if you just have a hard time remembering some of them, right? If you're like, oh, what was, what was it for stroke uh, thickness? Was it stroke thickness or stroke weight or stroke width? What was it, right? You can start typing it and it will show it to you, right? So all those can be useful reasons to use this. Now what about the language itself, right? What we've done here so far, like why don't we just use a graphics program like Photoshop or Illustrator or use SVG, a different language. So some of the things about this that are really useful is that uh, this runs live, right? So this draw function is being continuously run by the p5.js. And what I mean by that is what if I type in a different command? So maybe I wanna type in prints and in here, I can use a variable called frame count and semicolon. And if I refresh this, we should see a number. Now we don't see it right now because print isn't actually printing it to our canvas. Instead, it's printing it somewhere else. It's printing it in the console. So if I go to help up here and I type in console, show JavaScript console, so it's under develop. There we go. So <laughs> the frames are just shooting up, right? Uh, but this is actively running live, right? So it didn't run it once and then uh, stop. It's still running that that uh, that canvas with whatever's in there over and over and over again, which allows for some interesting things. So what can we actually do with that? One of the shapes or elements that we used in the previous video was point. Now we can define specific coordinates for a point, like you know something towards the top, like uh, 10, 10 or something, right? That'd be near the zero, zero top. Or we could define something towards uh, maybe the bottom, which for me would be 600 by 400, right? Because that's the uh, size that I've given this. Or we could do something different. We could make it interactive with the user. So maybe I want to rely on mouse X, the uh, X coordinate of the mouse itself. So I could do mouse X and I could do, maybe I do mouse Y, maybe I do both coordinates of the mouse and if I save and I refresh, right now we don't see anything, but if I start to move my mouse across the canvas, now you can see the little dots are following my mouse cursor, right? Now I could switch this if I don't want it to follow directly, I could use mouse X for both, right? This should give us, I think, a line, right? Yeah, a diagonal line that goes across, right? And sort of the same thing for mouse Y. Well, actually, let's look at what this is. So if I move my mouse up and down, right, no dots, but if I move it left and right, then we start to get these dots, right? Because that's the X value of the mouse. If we do mouse y will be more or less the same thing except instead of oops 
instead of on the horizontal, it'll be when we move it on the vertical, right? So very little change, actually no change on the uh, horizontal, except for when I can't keep my mouse in the same spot. And then on the vertical, that's where you can see these dots start to go. So that could be something interesting to play with too. Right now, this is just a dot. What if we want to do something more interesting with this? So we could do any shape, but I'm going to do a line. Now keep in mind, a line has two points, right? The starting and the ending. So I'm going to do this from 0, 0 up to mouse X and mouse Y. So if I save it and I refresh, now we get this line that goes over, right? And that's kind of neat. We could also uh, have multiple lines. So if instead of just mouse X and mouse Y, instead of just having the line go from 0, 0, I could also have one that goes from the other end, right? 600 and 400, right? That means that there's going to be one coming from here as well as one coming from up here. So if I refresh, right, that's kind of interesting. We could do one coming from the other spot. And actually, we could do one from all the spots. So then we could have 600 and 0 with mouse X and mouse Y. We could have one from the other position, right? We could have one from 0 and 400. Now right now when we're doing this, it is slowly building up, right? It's all becoming additive until we get just like absolute darkness in there. What if I don't want that? What if I want it to be more of just a live line where what was there behind it is gone? So then what I might want is maybe we try putting our background back in there, right? So let's put in a hex value of, I don't know, we can, we can use CCC. I think that's what I used before. Refresh. There we go. So now we don't have the lines building up because each time the uh, the loop is run, and this is basically a loop running over and over again, right? Each time this is run, it's redrawing the background and then redrawing these lines. So we don't have that build up that we saw um, on the previous version. We could also play a little bit with colors. So if we want, we could do stroke. Now, it's a little bit difficult to do uh, tie the, the hex values to the mouse X and mouse Y, but I could tie RGB values to it. So instead of doing uh, the hex values, let's instead just put in mouse X, so that would be the R, and I could put in mouse X again, and maybe this one is mouse Y. All right, let's try that and see if that worked. There we go. So now you can see that the color changes depending on where I put my mouse. And that could be interesting too. So these mouse X and mouse Y options, you can tie those to anything. It could be tied to any anywhere that you would have a value in there. If we get rid of our background, that might be a little bit more interesting. Maybe instead of having both of these, mouse X, maybe one is zero, right? So that way we have some darkness in there. There we go. So you can play with these things, try making something with it, try seeing what happens. It's a, a fun feature. If you did something like an ellipse or a rectangle or some other shape, you could also put the size in there, right? Um, or with the lines, I could have the line width or the stroke width um, be tied to the mouse X or the mouse Y as well. So try some of those things out, see what happens.